Welcome to part two of the Dividing Head series. If you haven't seen part one yet, that is probably the place to start. If you have seen part one already, frankly, I'm surprised you're back. In this part, we are going to tackle the boring operations. They are the main spindle hole at a nominal one and one sixteenth. This bore will also shape the spindle clamping cotter here. This intersects the bore so that the machining will create a scallop in the side of the cotter. We will also tackle the 5 8 bore for the tailstock bar, which will go here. And we have to machine the 1 and 3 8 spigot for the banjo bracket, which will go here. All of these will be done on the lathe itself, as they are to be at the lathe centre height. So the only dimensions that need to be controlled will be the spacing of the features and their diameters. The spindle housing is going to be line bored, initially using this 9 16 bar, which is small enough to fit into the cord hole in the casting. It has a 1 8 cutter that can be advanced using an M4 screw here in the back, and it's secured with an additional screw here on the side. The angle of this cutter has been chosen carefully such that a full turn of that M4 screw advances the cutter 20 thou perpendicular to the bar, so effectively 40 thou off diameter. I have a range of cutter lengths for this bar, so that when I reach the limit of adjustment, I can back that screw off again and switch to a longer cutter to continue. And that should get me to the stage where I can use this larger 7 8 bar, exactly the same process, but now we have a quarter inch cutter and an angle that advances by 18 thou. I am going to bore the hole for the tailstock bar as well, but this time using a boring head held in the lathe. And I'm going to stick with the boring head to machine the spigot, but this time I will need to spin the cutter around to face inwards, and then I'll run the lathe in reverse. That will sweep the cutter around in this direction. I'm okay to run the lathe in reverse, as this is a one-piece boring head that I've made myself, and it will be held in a collet, so there are no threads to unwind. Over at the lathe, and I am taking some care here to get this square. Having taken a great deal of time over the base, it would be a shame to go ahead and bore the spindle hole crooked. As I've said before, with the height of all the features constrained by the lathe centre height itself, the next step is to find a reference for the horizontal spacing. To do this, I have glued a temporary piece of aluminium to the front of the spindle housing to allow me to scribe the centre, and I'm then picking this up by using a wiggler in the headstock. My lathe does not have a DRO, nor does it have resettable dials, so I'm going to need to pay attention to both the value on the dial and the direction in which I move the cross slide to get there. In this case, the dial is at 68 thou, and I was moving the cross slide away from me. The first bore I'm going to machine is the tailstock bore, which is 1 and 5 sixteenths from this center. That is 1.313, so we need 13 full turns of the dial and 13 thou. With this location dialed in, I am going to abuse one of my gib screws to lock the cross slide so it cannot move while I complete this machining. And before we go any further, it's important to remember to clamp the two cotters in place using that tapped hole from earlier, and I'm also going to tape over the cross slide hole here just to keep any swarf out of the cross slide. We are now all set to complete this operation, so we're going to go centre drill quarter inch pilot all the way through. Next size up is 39 sixty-fourths, which will leave me just 1 sixty-fourth, which is roughly half a millimetre, to remove with the boring head. I am constantly checking the bore is still too small for my tailstock bar and keeping this drill cool with compressed air. The last thing I want is to this to drill oversize and leave me in a world of trouble. With that done, I can now switch to the boring head to open out to final dimension. There isn't much left to remove here, and after touching off, I'll be taking about 5 thou from diameter per pass, followed by an occasional spring pass. Progress is checked regularly using a telescoping gauge and by offering up the bar itself. This is now all being done under power feed at the very finest setting. I now have a nice fit on the tailstock bar which means that this clamp has done its work and it can be removed. The tapped hole that will be left in the top of the casting is no longer needed and it will eventually be capped off with a grub screw. Before we go any further, I will just pull up those cotters with a couple of M6 nuts and washers just to check they work all right. 
uh, is something that irritates me a little bit about this project. Uh, all of the dimensions are in Imperial, as per the original plans by Thomas, but the hardware has been replaced with the metric equivalent. Now, I've nothing at all against metric fasteners, but mixing the systems in the same project is just a little bit unpleasant. So those cotters have secured this bar really nicely. Uh, I'll just loosen those nuts a little to check their release. And they certainly do. I'm also a little bit disappointed that those two threads are at different heights. Now this could be down to odd washers, but either way, I will need to trim those down to my own sanity, or they will smile at me forever. Okay, that is everything to be done on this bore. The next is to address the collar machining here, and then the main bore. So we will wind the cross slide back to the original position and make a start on that. So I now have the shorter boring bar mounted in the head, and as you can see, the cutter is facing towards the axis of rotation. I now have to move the cross slide back to the center of the main spindle bore, and that was 13 full turns out, and then 13 thou. Looking at my note here, it was at 68 thou on the dial, so I will have to go past that value and then return to it, moving the cross slide away from me. That will eliminate any backlash in the slide. And I'm immediately going to relock that cross slide before I forget to do so. Looking at this now, I have a horrible feeling that this boring head is not going to be big enough, which is a shame, as it is my only boring head. So we are at the maximum travel of this boring head, and at this setting, it is going to take a much bigger cut than I would normally be comfortable with. I'm going to try it anyway. I'm going to set it to the slowest power feed possible, and it might just be okay. <laughs> so it turns out it wasn't okay. I have been over to the mill and I have relieved the boring bar here, which allows me to move the cutter in slightly. Just 20 thou or so, but that should be enough to make this work. Alright, it's still not lovely, but it is doing it. I have a carriage stop set on the bed to limit the depth, and I will play around with the feeds and speeds to try and find a setting that gives an acceptable finish. Hopefully before I run out of material to remove. Right, after trying more things than I care to admit, I have found some settings that are creating a not too terrible finish. We are in back gear and I am running this at about 20 RPM, with a feed of 2 thou per revolution. And I'm removing about 25 thou from diameter per pass. It is slow going. After a considerable amount of time, what has been mere seconds for you has been an hour and a half for me. I have eventually got this to size. Having looked at this again, I think I might have been better off mounting this on a faceplate or on a mandrel and turning this feature in about five minutes. Still, it's done now. I have removed the boring head and here we are set up with the between centres boring bar. The casting hasn't changed position on the cross slide, and the cross slide hasn't changed position either, so the bore we are about to create should be concentric to the collar we have just machined. The bar is being driven by a dog here, which is up against the chuck jaws, and it is being supported between centres. One in the chuck, which I machined in situ, and one in the tailstock. The clamp here is holding in the brass cotter, which is in the hole you can't see, on the other side of the casting, and that will be machined with the bore in exactly the same way as the two tailstock cotters, and we'll get this scallop feature machined into it, and it will then clamp the main spindle when tightened. I will be feeding this towards the chuck under power, so the only thing left to do is to touch off, put on some depth of cut, and get started. We have reached the limit here of this tool bit, so I will switch this out for the next longest one. We then repeat this operation exactly the same as before, gradually opening out the bore until the larger bar will fit into the hole.
Okay, we are now large enough for the 7 8 bar, so let's switch that out now and carry on. The nominal size we're aiming for here is 1 and 1 16th, but the spindle will be made to suit. So as long as we are close to that value, I will call this done. I'm taking 18 thou off diameter per pass here until we get close. I will dial that down to take finer cuts once we are nearer to final size. So that was the final pass and the main bore is complete. The last thing I need to do in this setup is to machine the final hole in the tailstock block here. So let's get that set up now. Yet again the casting has not moved position so we are right on the axis of the main bore. This whole assembly here is designed to hold a 60 degree centre to provide tail support for work that might need it. So that's why it's being done now as this assures the concentricity we need. Right now the block is clamped tightly onto the bar but the bar is free to rotate in the main casting. All I need to do is to rotate this and pick up my centre punch using the wiggler here. Again, this is only an aesthetic alignment to centre the hole in my layout. It will be in the correct position by virtue of the setup. Again, the clamping cotter is held in place to be machined at the same time, and I will drill this out most of the way and then bore the hole to be a close fit on a piece of half inch silver steel. In fact, this piece of half inch silver steel that I'm going to use to actually make the centre. Here is the progress so far and I'm pretty happy. I have a nice fit on what will become the 60 degree centre. All of the clamps work as they should. The surface finishes on all of the bores are good. Certainly more than acceptable for the intended use. So that should be the machining of the main casting entirely complete. There shouldn't be anything more I need to do to this particular component. So that seems like a good place to bring part two to an end. In the next video, we will tidy up all of the other components here, finish anything that is only part done, machine the 60 degree center, that sort of thing. Please look out for that if you're interested. Again, do leave any thoughts in the comments. If you do want to see more like this, please do subscribe and hopefully I'll see you again. Cheerio.